How can, how can the demons be listening to you when you don't listen to God? Every child of God wants to flow in the anointing of God's Spirit. Because we know that we are from a supernatural kingdom. And we like to see the supernatural in our lives. It's normal. The Bible says, desire spiritual gifts. So it's normal. It's, it's right for us to desire all those things. But, there's a more excellent way. There's a more excellent way. What respect do you have for the anointing? What respect do you have for the anointing? What is it to you? Do you even recognize the anointing of God's Spirit? You want it to work. How can it work? First Samuel chapter 24. Are you there? And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coach by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. They didn't know that's where David was. That very cave where Saul came to rest. There was where David was. So close. I remember what David said. He said, look, there is but one step between me and death. He knew how close death was. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it seemed good unto thee. Then David arose. Look, he was right in the hand of David. I, remember, David was a man of war. Are you hearing me? This, he now had a band of men that he was training. They had now been labeled terrorists. <laughs> so he was hiding in the cave. When Saul came there with all his regalia, you know, and moved inside, not knowing that David was close by. And his men, was, his men were around the entrance, waiting to make sure David was not around. But David was inside. <laughs> not alone, with his men. They said, boy, this is the time. God said he'll put his enemy, your enemies in your hand. Now kill him. He said, hold on. I want to show you something. He says, David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. I want to show you how close he was. He cut off the skirt of his, of his robe. That's how close David was. He could have killed him. Huh. Listen. Verse 5. And it came to pass afterward that David had smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. What a man he was. He regretted it that he did such a thing. Listen to his words. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the Lord, he is the anointed of the Lord. He said, God forbid that I should do this thing against my master, because he is the Lord's anointed. You see, he taught his men how to respect the anointing of God, because he cut off the skirt. He didn't attempt to kill him for cutting the hem of his garment. He felt it. How could I have done this thing? 
He said, he's the anointed of the Lord. We are not supposed to do it. God had to prove him. He said, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. You want that great anointing, you must have respect for it first. Until you have that respect for it, you can't have it. You can't have it. How can, how can the demons be listening to you when you don't listen to God? Remember the scripture. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But what? Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. And bringing down what? Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And what? When what? Your obedience is fulfilled. So, your own obedience must be proved. Your obedience must be proved. See, God needs... I'll tell you something. Uh, God needs champions for the world. He raises champions... He has to have them. There are those who, who see the needs of other people. And then turn their backs on everything else to meet the needs of others, to deliver others. Why would you be praying at night for other people in a city for them? Why would you be doing it when you could have been doing anything else? Why are you so concerned? Because the Spirit of God laid it in your heart. He's raising a champion out of you. Why do you find yourself speaking in tongues and confessing that people are coming to Christ in this city in the name of Jesus? Why? Why? It's not every Christian who is doing that. But why you? Because God has chosen you. Because He has put it in your heart. That's why you're concerned. That's why you're concerned. That's why you're concerned. He's really the champion. There has to be somebody. Somebody to help those sick ones get healed. There has to be somebody to lead others into salvation. There has to be somebody to show them the things of the Spirit. To bring them out of their darkness. Like he said unto Saul of Tarsus, I have appeared to you for this purpose. To make you a minister and a witness. Then he says, And I'm sending you now to the Gentiles. To turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. And that is your ministry. To turn them from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive remission of sins. And a place among those that are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. This is your calling. This is your ministry. This is your life's call. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And because of that, you want to do it right. You want to carry it correctly. You want to approach correctly. He says, every man that strives for the mastery must do it rightly. He must do it rightly. He must keep the rules and be moderate in all things. You're striving for the mastery. You're striving for the mastery. You want to be the best? There's a way. You want to be the best, right? There's a way. There's a way. There's a way. There's a way. There's a more excellent way. There's a more excellent way. The more of God's anointing you want to flow in, the more humble you must be. Because he gives his grace. The Bible says he gives more grace. That grace, he gives it to the humble. You want more grace? You have to be more humble. Oh, hallelujah. 
What a calling!